engineer Trudy Morgan from Sierra Leone. I am the president of the Sierra Leone Institution of Engineers and co-founder and former president of the Sierra Leone Women Engineers. Even if people don't believe your intentions, they can't ignore your actions. Have you ever found yourself charged up to do good? Something so amazing that you put yourself out there thinking, yep, this is what is needed. Let's get in there, let's get to work. An hour in, a day, a week, a month? You wonder, how did I get here? Why isn't it going as I planned? All I wanted to do was to help, achieve something positive, make people happy, make a difference. My mother was in hospital. As the eldest daughter of a traditional African family, I was in charge. I was 12 years old at the time. One Sunday, I decided to test the limits of culinary innovation. We had had jollof rice, coconut rice, curry rice. This Sunday, I was going to serve vimto rice. For those of you who don't know vimto, it is a fruity, sweet cordial. Children all over Africa love it, and I was no differently. Unsurprisingly, the rice refused to cooperate. Eventually, my father was duly called to the table to sample the results. And I remember his eyes, his eyebrows, and the wrinkling of his nose. The intention was good. The results never to be repeated. And thankfully, my father looked past the results and focused on the intention. Fast forward many years, and I was a chairperson for a charitable organization in the UK. I came back from the Cranfield School of Management, ready to make a change. I was fired up, ready to use my newly acquired skills to support the charity's growth. A priority was to make the organization more efficient in its delivery in response to our dwindling resources. I worked on the strategy, worked on the action plans, and introduced change management procedures to ensure that we introduced efficiency in our processes and procedures and were better able to capture information that would help monitor and evaluate all we did. But things did not move as fast as I thought that they should. What I considered simple and straightforward was met with resistance for reasons I could not fathom. But I was resolute and did not give in. We had all collectively agreed the new structures they were necessary for the good of the organization. Suffice it to say, I moved back home to Sierra Leone with my plans not fully implemented. I regularly visit the UK and on one such trip, popped in to see the organization. Well, imagine my surprise when a former head of the department casually remarked that they were now implementing all the initiatives I had tried to institute using the same processes and procedures I had developed. Wait, what? I spent months, scratch, years, convincing, conjoling, and as soon as my back was turned, they rolled it all out? Looking back, I know my intention was good, and the management knew the results would be good. But somewhere along the line, I forgot that not everyone was on my page and not running at my speed. The saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, is generally understood to mean that while people, um, some people intend to do good, their failure to produce good results is evidence of a fundamental disconnect in the intention. One such disconnect could be the failure to act, Inaction, whether due to fear, laziness, procrastination, or whatever range of excuses, reduces and sometimes prevents the chances of achieving well-intentioned goals. Another disconnect could be motive. In his writings about altruism, Stephen Garrett suggests that good intentions are not always what they seem, and that mankind tends to act from a less worthy, more selfish motive. 
I don't entirely subscribe to that view. I'm going to tell you how, as co-founder of the Cerulean Women Engineers, my intention to create a vibrant, active engineering sor sorority in Sierra Leone was severely misunderstood. The results could have been disastrous, but I learned some lessons along the way, which I will now share. So this is my story, but if you change the subject and the field, it could easily be yours. At the 2014 Biennial Conference of the Sierra Leone Institu Institution of Engineers, the few women present were challenged to get more female engineers involved. Another female engineer and I took it upon ourselves to accept the challenge. We jumped into action and got off to a great start. We called a meeting of women engineers, explained the challenge and why we saw this as a benefit to all female engineers in Sierra Leone. We then set about writing up the rationale for our existence, had discussions with the wider institutions, and after months of objections, were finally allowed to set up Sierra Leone Women Engineers as a special interest group under the institution. Hurrah! Our first win. The large number of women attended the first meetings, but numbers declined in subsequent meetings. This was a little, little disheartening, but we persevered. Unfortunately, Sierra Leone was struck by the Ebola epidemic, and for the next 16 months, nothing could happen. In December 2017, we held our first event, a book distribution event where women engineers presented books to, to um, schools where girls studied engineering or technical studies. We had so much fun with the girls, they insisted they wanted to come back. This led to the birth of the Saturday Club, which has successfully encouraged many girls into university to study engineering. Next, we set our sights on the university with the clear aim of providing mentoring and emotional support to women there. So you see, in our discussions with many women, several of them had cited instances of discrimination, bullying, exploitation within that um, setting. In this context, we recognize that we women engineers could offer a safe haven. So the outreach to university students was just that, letting them know that we are here and that we have their back. As a mature woman, I have been approached by several women who have asked to be mentored, coached, and supported in their career. For me, it only seemed natural to formalize these interactions within the auspices of women engineers. By this time, I had clearly seen five areas where women engineer could make a difference. A cadre of women engineering ambassadors going out, spreading the word. The growth of the Saturday Club, the creation of a diversity toolkit for the engineering sector in our country, a fearless campaign where we worked with other women across different sectors, and taking engineering <coughs> to women and girls in villages across the country. So there I was, with all my good intentions, but despite my efforts, the response was very low. I tried inspiring, enticing, cajoling, incentivizing, numbers and participation still remain low. So I decided to go on a fact-finding mission and started asking different women engineers why they were not participating. Answers ranged from they were busy, times were challenging, they had family and work. At one such meeting, I finally found out the real reason I was not able to get the cooperation of these amazing women. They were suspicious and did not trust my intentions. A young female engineer said to me that I would not be using her and there was nothing in this organization to benefit her. And she was sure I was collecting money for my organization using women engineers. To say I was gutted is an understatement. But there was a cause actually worth fighting for. So I had to do the work. 
my intention had not changed, but the results would not be what I expected if I didn't adjust my approach. Reality check. How could I address these issues? I realized that I could not force anyone to buy into my vision. I had to persuade. I started by working, those close to, working with those close to me, those who had reached out to me and sharing the vision with them. And I started to listen carefully. Sierra Leoneans are well known for our love of parties and having fun, and our engineers are no different. So to engage them, our meetings became a combination of seriousness and fun. Chillings, barbecue, live band, the works. I resisted the urge to promote every idea which I thought they would or should know about or should like or should see or should learn from. It was not about what I wanted. It had to be about what they wanted. I continued mentoring and coaching those closest to me and reaching out to those I heard had challenges with a commitment to fight their case alongside them. And in my career, I ensured that on all projects I worked on, barriers to women participation was either removed or lowered. And lastly, I encouraged elections so that the organization could be run by women engineers chosen by the majority of their peers. I understood sustainability cannot exist if everything lies on the shoulders of just one person. So, what has been on this road with good intentions taught me? It's difficult when people don't believe your intentions. And what sometimes happen, happens, it's difficult when people don't believe your intentions. And what sometimes happens is you start to doubt yourself. Is the intention good? Is the result worthy? To find your own strategy, I had to go back to the first thought and remembered why I started on this road. We must all listen to those who don't believe our good intentions, even if, even if it makes life difficult. Is the intention good? Is the result worthy? Past experiences shape our ability to trust and also colors our expect, expectations of the intentions of others. Knowing that, listen beyond the spoken words. Tough one here. Be ready to search your soul. The intention may be good, but the journey will inevitably, inevitably, inevitably try you and cause you to ask yourself why. Don't shy away from the hard questions. Answer them honestly. Answer them until you are satisfied that you have the answer, even if you don't like the answer. What has it taught me? That when your intention is sincere and for the common good, we should not be put off by the actions or inactions of others. As long as you have the convi conviction, keep pressing on. Um, where are we today, women engineers? We have a new executive comprised of young and vibrant women who will take female engineering forward in Sierra Leone. We have expanded our ability to mentor, coach, um, and some of these amazing women work for interna international organizations, which expands our network and enriches our body. Even if people don't believe your good intentions, they definitely cannot ignore your action. The same young woman who sus suspected my motives was instrumental in my receiving an Inspirational Female Engineer Award. As with my Vimto Rice, good intentions don't always turn out how we expect. And sometimes we are ahead of our time, running at 150 miles per hour whilst others are comfortable at 70 miles per hour. But by recognizing that we are all heading to the same destination and that those of us driving faster than others have to slow down and pick up other passengers along the way so that we can make this journey together 
And when we finally arrive at our destination, we are not alone. Do you have good intentions? I know I do, and I know they come from a worthy place. But I have learned that despite the intention, as Jimmy Cliff once said, actions speak louder than words. And only our actions can confirm whether our intentions started with the right or wrong motives. Thank you.